Hey, what's up guys? Matt here. Before I get into today's review, uh, I just want to ask you guys a serious question. Uh, now, I want to improve the quality, just the look of my videos. And by doing so, I want to add 4K. Uh, so just let me know if you guys, um, you know, if there are a lot of 4K or even 2K users out there. Um, would you like to see my reviews in 4K? You know, the added quality, you know, you can see the extra details. Um, and also, would you like to see it for uh, plane spotting? Um, I would really like to know because um, I would love to improve my quality. And if, and if um, there is overwhelming support for 4K, I will um, definitely get into that because I have the equipment to do so. Now let's get into this review. This is the Philippine Airlines A320 by Gemini Jets in a 1 to 200 scale. Please check the description in case you miss anything throughout this video. My Facebook, Twitter and Instagram links will be down there. I pre-ordered this from easytoys.com. Go check them out. Their website is in the description. This is my fifth A320 model and it's my first Philippine Airlines model. Some information about Philippine Airlines. The operation space is out of the PNB Financial Center in Bay City in Passe in the Philippines. The main hub is at Manila Nino Aquino International Airport. Main hubs are Angeles City Clark International Airport and Cebu Mactan International Airport. Their focus city is Calibo International Airport. They were founded on the 14th of November 1935 as Philippine Aerial Taxi Company, but changed to Philippine Airlines on the 26th of February 1941. They commenced operations on the 15th of March 1941 when they were officially named Philippine Airlines. Their fleet as of the 16th of April 2017 consists of 63 aircraft and 10 of which are A320s. They serve 53 destinations worldwide and their current A320 routes are from Manila Ninoy Aquino to Auckland via Cairns, Bacolod City, Bangkok, Cebu, Darwin via Brisbane, uh, Davao City, Dumaguete City, I think that's how it's pronounced, General Santos, Guangzhou, Ho Chi Minh City, Hong Kong, Iloilo, or Iloilo, um, Jakarta, Jeju, Xinjiang, Kalibo, Laog City, uh, Legazpi, Macau, Port Moresby, Puerto Princesa City, Shanghai Pudong, Singapore, Taklaban, Taipei, uh, Tuguegarao, Xiamen, and Zamboanga. Uh, there's a lot of names I've um, never heard of before, so um, I hope my pronunciation isn't that bad. Uh, got a few more routes here. So we've got um, also from Cebu to Bacolod City, uh, Cagayan de Oro, Chengdu, Davao City, General Santos, Calibo, Osaka, Kansai. Puerto Princesa City, Singapore Changi, and Tokyo Narita. And lastly, Kalibo to Beijing, Busan, Chengdu, Guangzhou, and Seoul Incheon. This aircraft's first flight was on the 13th of September 2012 and delivered to Philippine Airlines on the 9th of October 2012. The Airbus engine designation code for this aircraft is 14. So let's take a look around the box here. Gemini 200, Philippine Airlines, a picture of the aircraft, Airbus A321 to 200 scale. In the back of the box. By the way, uh, I know Philippine Airlines was heavily demanded on my channel. I was always going to get to Philippine Airlines considering they had a route in Auckland. Uh, I hope to get some, you know, different aircraft types of Philippines. Uh, that way I can do a, that way I have a more diverse range. Top of the box. Right hand side. The bottom. And the left. First thing we see is the, the stand pieces, which I don't like. And then we have the model. Alright guys, the model is now out of the box 
and we will start at the cockpit windows on the port side. Right, so there we have the cockpit windows, um, window wipers, PJ tube static ports on the nose gear. We have uh, 19, that's part of the registration number. Philippines titles. I don't see any, any inboard landing lights there. We then have the uh, CFMI CFM 56-5B4 engine. If you didn't already know, CFM International is a joint venture between General Electric and Snecma. Not a bad looking engine. Looking a little, um, to be honest, a little rough. I think uh, the shape of it could be a little better. Side, it's looking uh, pretty good. Fan blades do spin. This one's not a not entirely um, free spinning. Got the strake on the inside of the engine nacelle, the and then the same on the side. Hopefully, this one's a lot um, a lot uh, stiffer. And also, there's a strike on that side as well. Uh, landing lights. I don't really see any. I don't know if those two holes here are supposed to be landing lights. Um, but I don't see anything that's noticeably um, representing landing lights. Alright, now moving along the leading edge, we come to the wingtip where we have the Wing fence, a wingtip fence, uh, and the red navigation light. And back onto the fuselage, we have the 75th anniversary uh, sticker, which they applied to, I believe, all their aircraft. Because I haven't seen one lately without without it, so I believe it was applied to all aircraft. Registration numbers RPC eight. 619 or Romeo Papa Charlie 8619 and then we have the uh, Philippines flag because they are the flag carrier of the Philippines and then we have the tail which is just a representation of the flag The APU could be more detailed. It's literally just been flattened. I think out of a lot of uh, moles, this one could be improved the most, especially from what I've already seen. Uh, and now the cockpit windows on the starboard side. It's also the Peter tube static ports, part of the registration on the gear door, Philippines titles, the front cargo container door. And the CFM 56 engine. The wingtip fence on this side with the green navigation light. And onto the fuselage again, we have the 75th anniversary sticker, red cargo container door, bulk bin, bulk bin door. Registration number, the Philippines flag, and the Philippines logo on the tail. All right, let's take a look underneath the aircraft now.
Okay, so we have the nose gear, antenna, Nakaduck's Demon Jets logo, um, beacon light, hole for the stand, main gears, gear doors. And then the wing flaps, that's ailerons. Easy light to the engine. And then the same on this side, but with the registration number. With an antenna. One more antenna there. And then the APU housing. Top of the aircraft, antenna, some markings for other antennas, anti collision light, uh, ADF antenna, overwing emergency exit uh, walkways, flaps, that's added on, spoilers. We also have the, um, that's the thing that says do not step inside this area or do not walk inside this area. Top of the engines. Same on the side. Registration number though. Not often you see a registration number on top of the wing. Antenna. Another antenna. And the grey dot on each hosel stabilizer. They are the logo lights that light up the tail at night time. All right. Okay, go through the seating of this aircraft now. So version one, which is this aircraft, we have, uh, I believe this is how it's pronounced, Mabuhe Business, which is 12 recliner seats, rows one to three. That's from here to here. And here to the back of the aircraft is Fiesta Economy, 138 seats, rows 4 to 12 and 14 to 27. That's a total of 150 seats. And then the same points again where I marked off on the aircraft. Mabuhe Business, 12 recline seats, rows 1 to 3. Fiesta Economy this time has 144 seats, rows 4 to 12 and 14 to 28 with a total of 156 seats. Alright, now let's take a look at some features of the aircraft. Landing gear rolls, I believe one is um, the one, the main gear that's closest to the camera uh, is the one that's um, quite stubborn. You can maybe be able to hear it squeaking. So, yeah, that's uh, that one doesn't roll, but uh, nose gear does swivel just. Gotta be very careful because um uh the pin in in the nose gear is very uh is um not that thick. So it will bend it quite easily. I have had I have had one break before, not by my own doing, just because it's so loose and so thin that it just uh whoops, that it just yeah came up came off. So you have to be careful with these ones. But other than that, um they uh, work how they should, mostly. Okay, so let's uh, get to the stand. So this is the dreaded... Uh, there we go, three-piece stand. Okay, so there are a total of two legs that you install onto the main bit. And of course you just them into their places. I'm not going to put them in all the way or too tightly because I want to get them back out again. So it just sort of sits like that and then place it down. And there we go. Sort of makes a kind of a click. It's not a click as such but it kind of sounds like that and so that's when you know you've bottomed out um, when the stand is bottomed out into the 
a hole in the aircraft. Of course, there are no uh, removable landing gears, but that's uh, that's um, what you would expect with the, this size aircraft. Anyway, I hope you have, hope you have enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did. Comment, tell me what you think of this model. Tell me if you're going to get it. I would uh, highly recommend getting one. It's a fantastic model. Um, subscribe for more. Uh, share this video as well so other people can um, see if they want to consider it. Overall, apart from its uh, few um, details that Gemini could get right next time, I believe it's still worth getting and it's uh and I hope to get more Philippines models because um I know they're highly requested but um I just need to sort of figure out which ones are best for me. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.